I just want to say I'm not trying to say that if you're white, you can't complain. Right. I'm just saying that if you're black, you get to complain more. Right. Right. Because <laughs> you can't. There you go. Don't, don't tell the band that. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. 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 you can't. You get this right. You can't take people's like historical context away from them. And right. everybody wants this to. Like white people are always like, "Come on, it wasn't us." Like they want black people to forget everything. <laughs> Like every year, white people add a hundred years to how long ago slavery was. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard educated white people say slavery was 400 years ago. <laughs> no, it very wasn't. <laughs> it was 140 years ago. That's two 70-year-old ladies living and dying back to back. <laughs> That's how recently <laughs> you could buy a guy. That's it. And it's not like slavery ended and then everything has been amazing. <laughs> like it just... Oh, I'm glad that's over. Oh yeah, it just ended like a clean <laughs> where you don't have to wipe. Just boom. And then it's just been parades and presents right, ever right, since. Right, exactly. you, gotta, you gotta remember that if you meet a black person, they have gray hair, they remember a time they weren't allowed to use a certain toilet. So give them a little, you know, time to be cranky. And by the way, white people have our own thing that we, yeah. stuff that we went sure, through. Sure, sure. That, that hurt us that we have to cope with. Like when they took our slaves away. That was really <laughs> hard for us. And we're still, so it's pretty even. <laughs> so, it's, so it's even. Yeah. It's even. And white people, that slavery shit. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> I ain't even mad at y'all about that. For real. You know what I'm saying? Black people, we be fucking with y'all about this shit. Because ain't a brother or sister in this room that has been a slave. We ain't none of us picked no fucking cotton. We wouldn't have known shit about it if y'all hadn't have made the movie Roots. <laughs> y'all fucked up right there. It wasn't like they taught it in school. Chapter 7, slavery. Chapter 8, beat a nigga ass. They never taught us. When that fucking movie Roots came on, that shocked the shit out of every black man in this room. And when we just like, what, what the fuck? That's how it was? You know what I'm saying, remember? White people, y'all remember? The next day we came to school and beat the shit out of y'all. I know that's a traumatic experience, you have to remember. <laughs> and y'all gave brothers some fucked up choices, man. Remember they used to say, well, chop your dick or your foot. You know everybody's like, go right here, man. Go right here. Now do what you gotta do, man. You know what I'm saying? That's an easy choice to make, because you can hobble over to some pussy. <laughs> you can't show up with two good legs and no dick. <laughs> and that boat ride was a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? That was some fucked up ass shit, man. That boat ride, because it ain't like it is today, you know what I'm saying? Couple of weeks from here to Africa in these cruises, playing shuffleboard and shit. These motherfuckers was at the gully of the ship, down the bowels. You know what I'm saying? Chained to each other. Hundreds of motherfuckers just chained together with little diaper shit on. You know what I'm saying? That was a year-long ride. Because them were sailing ships and the wind don't blow all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know they sitting down there mad the motherfucker. <laughs> Where you stop swinging your leg. I'm chained to you every time you swing your leg, my leg go up too. And you, why you shitting all the time? I'm not the only one shitting. Where else me gonna shit? Me chain to you, chain to him, chain to Leroy, chain to Tyrone, chain to Shaka Zulu. We all chained together. Now me gonna shit right here. Me telling you now, you stink. I'm not the only one shitting, look at you. You're taller than you were yesterday. <laughs> Stacking shit on top of shit on top of shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some gold-plated chains would make a nice retirement gift for a very, very good slave. <laughs> <laughs> well, this Are was... you serious? Well, this was written. Are you serious? This was written years Did ago. Did you just write that? I didn't write Did it. Did you just say that? No, I read it. Yes. But truly speaking, Mexicans are the hardest working people in America. I don't care what anybody else says. They are. God bless the Mexicans. They are. 
Mexican people want the hard labor jobs that even us African immigrants, we are scared. We don't mess with those jobs. A Mexican will take the job like that. But what I don't understand myself as an African is why did the slave masters go all the way to Africa? <laughs> went all the way to Africa, took my people on a ship, brought them here to America when Mexico is right next to Texas. <laughs> I went to Texas though looking for racism about two months ago. I had a showdown in Texas, got off the plane and shit, walked up looking for racism, but my friends always told me, you better not go to Texas. They'll fuck you up. <laughs> and when the mother, my modern day brother here, that shit, they be like this, what they ain't fucking nobody up. Brothers act like they couldn't have been slaves back 200 miles years ago. It ain't like the motherfuckers d d like that shit. I wish I was a slave. I would fuck somebody up. <laughs> shit, tell me to bail some motherfucking cotton. I would have been on the street and shit. You would have came up and said, hey, yo, nigga, bail this cotton. Oh, I said, suck my dick, master. <laughs> suck my motherfucking dick. That's right, I ain't bailing the motherfucker. <laughs> it wasn't like that shit. The first dude that got off the boat said that shit. Bail that cotton. Fuck you, motherfucker! The other motherfucker said, we'll bail the shit. Just keep that shit away. Just keep that fucking shit away from me. I got off the motherfucking plane, walked off, got up, walked up my bag, my, all my black shit on, black leather, big ass medallion and shit on like this. Little white dude walked up and said, this your bag? I said, yeah, it's my fucking bag! Why, motherfucker? A black man can't have a suitcase? <laughs> I hate how much fun black people can have racially, man. It's just, I can say anything I goddamn want racially. And white people have to sit there and take it. <laughs> I am evil, yes. He's like, come on, man. I, I don't even say it because of that. I, like, I, 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 love, I, I love a little racial. Yes, look, man, you know. Let's be fair. I mean... It, Honestly, be nicer with the racial game. I mean, it, 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 I like to talk to uh, you know white people about being honest about uh, Obama. You gave it a shot. You did. <laughs> you gave it a two-year shot. Like, oh yeah, I tried. I tried to. We tried to. <laughs> but you see, not. It's not. It's just. It fell apart. It really. It really did. And I'm gonna tell you something you don't know about black folks. It, it, we would be on your side. Uh, and talking to white people, we would be on your side a lot more if you would, uh, you know, just not ever talk about how you feel about anything racial. We will catch up to you. Now, serious, because black people on the edge of going, what the fuck is Obama doing? But it's too many white people outwardly hating him, so we can't. We go, you shut the fuck, you shut up. I'll be against them, like, stop. I'm having rallies and all kinds of stuff. I'm telling you, I'm this close to... I'm mad at him because I thought I would have a white slave by now. I thought... I thought it was Vengeance Day. But I had me a white family. Oh, big old fat white girl gonna warm my bed up. Get upstairs, Susan. Warm my bed up, feed my baby with your giant white titties and... I'm gonna go outside and stare your husband in the face and decide whether I'm gonna sell him or not. <laughs> and you know your wife's upstairs warming up my bed. You know that, right? <laughs> Philip. <laughs> That's uncomfortable, ain't it? That's, uncom That's uncomfortable. I apologize. That's uncomfortable. I see someone wrote you something about an article that I read. Oh, my family slaves article? Yeah. Yeah. That was an intense article. I wanna, but what does this person say? Can you read the question? Yeah, I'm, that's what I was gonna do. Can you not sit on the recorder again? All right, my family slaves article. Hey, Bilbo Baggins, long time listener, first time emailer. Um, I read an article written by Alex Tizon. He's dead now, okay? That shocked me, but didn't really necessarily surprise me, and I love your cultural, your cultural perspective on it. Oh my God, this is so fucking long. 
<sighs> in this article, this guy talks about his family owned a slave for 50 years, even after immigrating to America. They smuggled her with them and all that. They treated her like shit, never paying her, forcing her to sleep on top of laundry. I imagine it's the dirty laundry. Why would you want to have somebody... And constantly beating her for the tiniest of errors. Only when the writer grew up with an American identity that he realized what they were doing to the poor woman wasn't right did he and his sibling confront their parents over this. Hey, Mom, you know, you've been beating the shit out of that lady who sleeps on her clothes. According to my teacher, that's not right. As a guy of Chinese descent raised in the Americas, raised in America, I've witnessed poor people like this firsthand. Growing up, visiting family back in Hong Kong, I'd see my cousin, they're millennials, by the way, being tended to by a young Filipino girl no older than her 20s. I never thought much of this back then. Looking back, it seems pretty fucked up. I asked my mother about these kinds of people, and she simply said, that's just the way things are. These girls are poor, they need to support their family, and that's the only kind of shitty employment that they can get. Once my grandfather took me past City Hall in Hong Kong on a Sunday, and I saw hundreds of young Filipino girls just sitting on the ground doing absolutely nothing. I asked him what was that all about. He said that Sunday was their day off and they had nothing better to do than loiter. They sent all their money back home to their family, so it's not like they could shop or go to a restaurant or anything. They ate and slept with their employers. I never seen my grandfather turn his nose up at a group of people like that ever before. My grandfather, whose parents were murdered by the Japanese during World War II, Oh, wow. Yeah, I read about that shit. The Rape the Man King. You ever read that shit? The fucking Japanese went off. And I had to walk to the orphanage after finding out. Jesus Christ, I've had an easy life. One of the kindest, most empathetic old farts I know loved randomly hugging white people. He called them hellos because that's what they'd say to him. One of these people out. Uh, here's the article. I'm just curious what someone like you raised with... Purely Western-centric ideologies would say about something like this. Uh, well, I mean, this country was kind of built on that. Yeah, I was going to say. So, well, um, <laughs> this country was built on slavery. Yeah, I can't really step away to, well, we don't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, obviously I think it's... it's you, know, you should read, I mean, not now, but you should read the article. It's, it's pretty powerful, that whole thing, because this woman was given to his mother by her father, and they're Filipino, and that's just, yeah, they were just like, here, this person is going to take care of you. So she kept this woman throughout her life, and it became her children's carekeeper. Yeah, because she didn't want to do any fucking work. And then she moved to America and be like, oh, my God, I got to take these kids out for a Sunday? No, no, that's, again, that's just like the culture. Like, this person is your nanny, and now, like, you inherit them or something like that. So it wasn't even as if she had... It's just part of their tradition. I have to be honest, like all of that. This guy grew up and then he realized that this woman wasn't getting paid and all this other stuff and he didn't realize until it dawned on him like she is a slave. And so he tried to make things better for her in her later life after his parents died and all this kind of stuff. But, Back rub. Yeah. <laughs> no, but by that time she, you know, didn't know any other life. So she didn't really, she wasn't like, yeah, I've been waiting to go shopping at the mall like this whole time. All right, this is so fucking sad. That's like when, it's very like sad. Dubai. Dubai, they tell all those people in east of there that, hey man, come on here and help us build all these beautiful buildings. You make all this money, you'll get out of poverty. And then they get them there and then they t confiscate their passports and it's just slave labor that builds those fucking places. And then they, uh, like the number one, the only way to get out of it is
they like commit suicide. Right. It's fucking brutal. Then you watch your shows and the big balloon titted whores go over there to buy a fucking bag. Not a fan. Not a fan of Dubai. Not a fan of Dubai. Why can't they be sinless like the United States of America? <laughs> Um, no, that's uh, all horribly depressing, and uh, I don't know what to tell you about that as far as, like, I don't know how you do that to somebody. There you go, and there goes the comedy right out the window. Um, I wonder why he, I'm just curious of why this person asked, like, I'm curious what someone like you raised with purely Western-centric ideologies would say about something like this. Again, it's like, are you forgetting that? This is America that was built on... Yeah, but I didn't grow up with that. So what he wants to do is get an outside perspective. It's actually an intelligent thing. Oh, you mean does. like, hey, I'm not from here. I grew up here, but, you know, I also have connections, you know, back there. So what, what do you think about this? And blah, blah, blah. You know what? I think, uh, I think it's uh, terrible. I'm going to go on a limb and say that that's fucking terrible. <laughs> oh, but oh, boop, boop, me on these. Me undies, everyone needs a slave. But do 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 me undies, me undies, work until they're in the grave. Your balls feel nice and soft, cause they polished him with the underwear they made in. That's fucking evil, but I'm white. It's part of my DNA. I'm really sorry. Alright, me undies. <laughs> hey Bill, what do you think about lifelong slavery? And somebody's dreams being crushed and so crushed that they don't even have any dreams and they don't want to do on a Sunday. I'd, I'd love to hear your Massachusetts Western take on that. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs>